Hey, I have an interesting offer in this video to show you. Make sure you watch to the end. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in the previous video, we talked about how to go about making the pattern for your favorite six pieces or eight pieces blouse. And here we are going to continue from where we stopped. So I've gone ahead to add my SD and every other thing I need for the dress. We're going to be piping this dress. Yes, to add extra design to our style lines. Now for the piping, I'll be making use of a cord. This is a sewing machine cord. Yes, used for a manual sewing machine. If you know that cord used for a manual sewing machine, that's the cord. And this black one is a bias strip, which I've ironed open. Okay, I ironed it open to give me exact one inch. Then I'm going to take it back to my ironing table to fold it into two. This way it will be easy for me to attach it when piping. Okay. So you take it to your, so, um, so I'm going to take it to your ironing table and do that. So I've done it here. You can see it's folded in two. Now we are going to begin, but before then let's take a look at the cord now i told you that the machine cord is what we're going to be using and i bought this i just bought a yard and i bought it for 150 naira or so in the market but it is too big for the size of piping i want to do so i went ahead to shred it so this is the shredding aspect shredding means losing it losing it out from the loops that it is it is a, a rope of three so i took out one and left two and if you take out one you find out that it becomes two strands of rope of which one is bigger than the other we'll be using the smaller one for the piping because it goes well with the size of um piping style that i want to add for the dress so i went ahead to shred and shred and shred and shred 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 i used my sewing machine to hold it down because there was no one here to help me hold it on the edge so i used the foot to pin it down while i shred okay so by the time you're done shredding the rope you're going to have two strands one is um bigger than the other yes if you don't want to make use of the rope you can also use a bigger fishing line something that has a bigger size okay you can make use of it also for controlling the piping the piping style that i want to do so at this point we're going to start piping now you sandwich that rope into your bias strip that you are folded because right now we're going to close the that same line to create a bustier okay every opening of our front line you're going to close it and before closing you're going to make sure you sandwich this um rope and your bias into the seam line so you have that uh, beautiful piping design that you're looking for so when you do this you're going to start sewing and before you sew make sure you change your foot to a zipper foot the zipper foot will help guide you better okay it will help to push that rope away from the seam line so it, you don't climb on it okay so as you sew you carefully place this in, in in line you place your bias and your rope in line with the seam so my seam allowance is about half inch so I want to make sure that where I'm placing that um, rope and the bias is approximately where my seam will be. You can see that even at the point of using my zipper foot, I'm still struggling with the seams. So when I'm done, you can see how beautiful this has turned out to be. Can you see the piping? Everything will turn out equal if you follow it this way. So that was the back that I just joined. Now, let me show you the process of how I did the front. Now, first of all, I changed the zipper foot to suit the position I want to work with. Then, guys, if you're making use of a manual sewing machine, you can make use of your zipper foot there. It works also. So I went, I went ahead to fix the piping. That's the bias and the rope 
by um, sandwiched together. I fixed it first on my center panel. Then I went ahead to sew the side panel on, on top of that. This made the work easier for me because the curve area, I didn't have to struggle too much when sewing it. Now, remember, guys, that when you're done piping, you have to remove the rope first, okay, before doing the next sewing. So, but if you prefer the other way of doing the piping, I still went ahead to show you guys how to do that. It's still the same process. All you have to do this time is struggle with the three piece that's the 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 fabric on that your piping which is the bias and the sandwich to rope then the curve on top so you just have to keep struggling but you're 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 running it with just one stitch this time around you're doing just one stitch or not and not a double stitch you can see the process took a much longer time compared to the other one i did so whichever you choose is your choice and make sure that when you're done okay you remove the rope that's why you want to make sure you don't sew on top of that rope because you'll be using that rope repeatedly for others so if you're using a zipper foot that you have to interchange at all times that means you have to keep changing like i change mine all right so you have to just keep sewing the piping and and so on and so forth you keep attaching it carefully all right so that's what i did for all the panels to get that um piping design in front of the that style line that we have there so if you've not subscribed to this channel what are you waiting for hit the subscribe button hit it hit it a thumbs up give it a thumbs up your fingers are not busy right now give it a thumbs up so you're going to go ahead and attach the piping to every other panel that is left for the that lines and this is it i'm done with all of them here so i went ahead to attach my zipper so in attaching your zipper you want to make sure that you use the right zipper foot that suits your sewing part okay so first what you're going to do is this you're going to take the zipper away from the hemline about half inch away from the hemline and sew all the way to the neckline okay and you're going to do the same for the other parts that's the you know the back is in two parts now so you're going to do it for the other part so i've closed the lining okay so you're going to go ahead and attach the lining also i'm trying to create a clean inseam finish for this dress okay so i went ahead to sew just like your seam so you follow your seam like that now you're going to sew the down part also so because my zipper is a detachable zipper, it's detachable, you can detach it and fix it back. So I was able to separate the zipper from each other. That's each pair. How am I to put it? I was able to make the zipper single so they are not in pair. So you're going to follow the same way you sewed in the main fabric that's how you're going to put so in the lining and when you're done you close it from the down like this okay you close it from the down this way and you turn it out so i also went out i had to turn that out too so that when you fix the zipper back you have something nice like this very clean inseam finishing like that okay so i went ahead to trim off the excess when i was sure that everything was okay i went i had to trim off trim off the excesses remove the excess zip and the rest and turned it out so you can go ahead to give this a good press down all right 
so it's time for the front the front i started from the hemline okay start from the M line and because i didn't iron this open i made sure i opened up the seams when i was sewing and also trimmed up the excess then closed the neckline notched it trimmed it off then turned it out to make sure it was okay before i continue so everything i try to do is i make sure it's okay before i continue i turn out make sure it's okay before i continue so right here i'm closing the shoulder line okay so i'm going to explain this now so you bring your the front part the right side of the front part the right side of the back part you place them front side facing front side this way then you use one of the lining part to overlap all of them then go ahead to sew okay you can also decide to sew everything lining to lining fabric to fabric all the way straight instead of overlapping that's also another way of sewing that so when you're done with that you trim off the excess like so and now we're going to go ahead to check if everything is aligning perfectly okay make sure that everything is aligning perfectly and i use my pin to secure some parts to know if there's some excesses i went down to my table and trimmed off every excess that was there to make sure everything lined up perfectly so you can see me using my pin to secure some parts the pin is very very necessary when it comes to sewing because there are some points there's a point where you actually need it to be sure if everything aligns perfectly so i went ahead to throw my tape on it to make sure that i am on the right track with the measurements <laughs> because i don't want to end up after all the efforts end up having an oversized dress or an undersized dress so it's very very important you do this so at this point i have to take this to the table to have an accurate measurement of what i was doing because right there i didn't have enough space to spread the dress and i wasn't comfortable with the result i was getting so i had to start all over to pin on the table so I need to use my pin to secure some points. Then when I was sure that everything was equal, I had some excesses. Then those excesses, I trimmed them out. So if you place everything equally and you have an excess or have excesses, you have to trim them off, especially if you're doing an inseam finish, okay? This will help you to know that you're sewing an accurate on accurate measurements by the time you're turning the dress to have your inseam um, stitches so i went ahead to mark i went ahead to mark the sides again using my tape to measure accurately this time i measured and i marked okay these markings also i transferred it to the inner fabric there's a fabric um inside that inner fabric is my main fabric so i transferred it so back on the sewing machine now i am going to close my side seams using the inseam finishing method okay so i want to hide my seams i don't want my seams to be visible especially at the sides so this is what you do you face it um okay first of all i went i had to open up the zipper so that it would be easier for me to turn the dress around so you place it fabric to fabric and you use the lining to overlap or you can place it fabric to fabric lining to lining then sew all the way matching up your hem line the hem line must be matched up then you flip over to sew okay you flip over then you follow that marking okay that um, chalk marking that i transferred i followed it all the way 
to the armhole point so i sewed from my hemline up to my armhole point okay so when i was done with that i turned I turned this seam out. I turned it out and it was looking so beautiful. It's closed at that point. So I went ahead to do the other side. So to do the other side, I measured from that point, making sure that the midpoint is accurate. Okay. It's accurate at the zipper point before the side points. So I also went ahead to transfer the marking to my main fabric that will be, that will be that will be some the seam that will be visible when I'm sewing. So I need to transfer that chalk there. Then I applied the same technique. I placed it fabric to fabric, lining to lining, then flipped the lining to cover up the rest of the fabrics. Then followed that chalk marking that I transferred. Now, when you're following the chalk markings, you want to make sure that all the fabrics, you should, you should be having about four layers of fabric. So two fabric, main fabric, uh, two main fabric. Yeah. Then the two, the two lining fabric. So when you're sewing, make sure they are aligned at the edges and you sew to the end. So at this point we are done yes i had to measure everything all around all around to be sure that the measurement is accurate when you sew and you measure you tend to have minimal error and adjustments so i went ahead to mark my sleeve for the sleeve i folded my fabric on fold to get my left and my right i because i'm going to be using a freehand method for the sleeve then once i had to mark my to measure my armhole the figure i got there i kept it in my head okay i got about 11 inches so this is the beginning of the sleeve i'm marking here from this beginning i'll take a measure of five inches for my bicep line then also went ahead to measure from that beginning to get the total length i'll be working with for the upper part of the sleeve now this is the lines i'm just telling you that's the upper line the bicep line and the full length then that measurement i got which is 11 inches i took out one and a half from it and mark okay on the bicep line now from this point when i get my curve at the end of the day i'll be measuring back to that 11 inches when i'm done with my curve okay now on this bicep line we're going to rule a straight line a diagonal straight line yeah like that then we'll divide it into three places. So you mark three lines, one, two, then three on the edge. Like Hey, so. we're having a free class and it's a seven days free online training camp on pattern making and garment construction. So if you've been wondering on how to get started in drafting pattern blocks for any body size or turning these blocks into different garment styles, then you need to join this camp now. You receive drafting and sewing challenges every day for seven days. To join, click the link around this video or send the phrase PMT camp as a WhatsApp message to the number on your screen. You can also check out the flyer for more details. See you in class. Then you're going to take about half inch on that first line. You take about half inch down. Okay. Then on the other line there, you take three quarter inch upward like so. Then you square up the line with a curve this way. Okay. This is how I go about marking my sleeve. It's been working for me. If you find this helpful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel like and share this video you can also drop your comment in the comment section now the next thing i'm going to do is to mark the round sleeve okay the round sleeve of the lower part of the sleeve okay so i marked that and i've already added the seam allowance to that i've added the seam allowance to that already. so that's where it is but at the point i discovered that that length was not accurate so i have to i have to uh, remeasure that and correct it so on the lower line we have the 
the round sleeve there I, I added it up added my seam allowance then square it up then it was time for me to cut so i went ahead to cut it out so when i was done cutting out this sleeve has um two section the section that will be fitted just that's the one we just did then the other part that will be on fullness like this okay so i went ahead to cut out that piece of fabric that i'll be using for the fullness now it's time to sew the sleeve to the blouse so the blouse i already closed the side so i measured what i have left there so whatever i got i measured it back on the sleeve and marked so this line will guide me to be accurate when sewing this sleeve into the blouse then i went ahead to hem the the part we'll be using for the fullness right i went ahead to hem it and draw the gathers so you're going to carefully go ahead to do that after that you also close the edge like this okay you close the edge and you're going to run your gather stitch on the other edge of the fabric then draw your gathers like this so when you're done doing that you can set it in this way and it will be easier for you to sew it all right so but before we do all the sewing in i went ahead to close all the edges that i have because i didn't use my weaving machine at this point so i close it with my bias to keep the inside very neat so i made sure that the gathers was even all around the sleeve okay then went ahead to sew it down so whatever i did for this particular sleeve i did for the other one also so unless you want to have an asymmetrical kind of design So we can see that I was trying to test that out to see how it is and it was really looking good. Okay. So next we are to sew the sleeve into the blouse. So you trim off every excess that you have or you must have, must have, have. <laughs> every excess that you have, trim them off first. Very important. Then you start sewing. This sleeve, I took it um, right side, facing right side, pinned it down on the shoulder line and the armhole, and there's a side hem line. Is it hem line? Side seam line, yeah. I, I pinned it down there to so even out everywhere, okay? So after I've pinned, and I'm sure everywhere was even, that was when I started sewing. As you're watching this, keep in mind that our class is coming up soon. Are you registered? Okay, at this point we are done and you can weave the edges or use your bias to seal it off. And we are done. Yes, this is our final result. Yes, this mannequin doesn't do justice to this at all. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe, like and share this video. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.